All right. Hello and welcome to This Week in Gwent, a weekly show in which we talk everything Gwent. And we're late. We're late a couple minutes. We had some technical difficulties, but we are here with Lankard. Lankard, how are you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I am I am more than great because um, if you follow us on Twitter, we kind of uh, just teased um, the new logo for the new expansion, which is coming very, very soon which is called Black Sun or Curse of the Black Sun. Dum, da, da, da. So yeah, uh, there will be reveals coming uh, Monday, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, we also have uh, one leak that we're going to show you today already. Uh, there's going to be one keyword that you will see in the upcoming expansion. But we'll get to that. But before that, so we will do what we always do in This Week in Gwen. So we will go through everything that happened in um, this week in Gwent, of course. Um, Lankard, you good with that? That sounds good to me. Awesome, awesome. Then let's move on to the red news then. Very quickly, um, we have uh, the new Prime Gaming thingy that you can get. So it's an ultimate keg. Um, so check it out for yourselves. Get it because it's really cool. Um, we're also recruiting for Gwent, so we're looking for our art team lead at the moment, and a technical artist. These two job listings have been posted, so check them out for yourselves. Um, if you have the talent, apply. Um, artists are always important for Gwent. Apart from that, the Steam Summer Sale started, so you can get all the good games on the Summer Sale. Uh, I think also Thronebreaker is there on a very, very, very big uh sale same goes to the witcher franchise and cyberpunk 2077 and in poland we also had um father's day which was yesterday on thursday so happy father's day to all the dads i know in the states like a week before that but we celebrate a little bit later moving on uh we're skipping community news because we're going to focus on the stuff that we have regarding the upcoming card drop which is called Black Sun. So this is the logo for it. Um, you can ponder it for a while. Uh, what the theme is, I won't be spoiling anything. I can just tell you that there will be a dedicated website, plus uh, content creators will be creating content for the cards that are coming with this one. And speaking of the cards, speaking of the cards, um, there is going to be something called Infused. So, so hear me out here. It's a status that adds effects or categories to a card. Removing the status also removes all added effects and categories. Lock disables infused abilities. So an example of an infused ability would be when you're changing a card's ability by adding or removing text from it. And this can be categories. For example, let's say you have a squirrel and you want to make it a elf and you can make the squirrel an elf. Other example would be for example, you add to a card, for example, at the end of turn, boost self by one. So that card has been infused. Um, if this card later on goes into the graveyard and you res it, it will you lose the infuse. If you lock it um, or you purify it, it will also lose the infused thingy on it. So yeah, um, ponder that then. Think about it. You have a whole weekend to, to think about it and to think about this beautiful logo um, and kind of get where we're coming from. So yeah, that's that's it. Simple as that. Easy clap. What do you think about it? As long as there's some way I can work it into my Dwarves and Witchers deck that I got going on, um, I'll be happy with it. Nice. Maybe like some resilience. Is there some resilience in there? Somehow I can, or is that a bit too much? It's a bit too much, but um, if you play Scoyotel and there is something that you used to play for Scoyotel and you stopped playing it because it needed more support, I think it will get a little bit more support in this one. So that's 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 the that's the winky winky uh, thing I can tell you. And yes, uh, it, this one is going to be creepy and dark, um, like someone mentioned in the comments. So it's going to be one of those expansions that has a, a very Curse vibe to it kind of reminds me of Crimson Curse uh, to some extent, but uh, you might get that. All right, so that's that's it for the news. Um, Lankard, how you doing? You 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 reached out to me to be on uh, Twig, which is awesome. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Like, um, 
how did you discover Gwent? When did you discover Gwent? And what's up with that? <laughs> well, basically, I after I started streaming in late. Uh, it was like November of 2018 or so, and started off with Fortnite. And long story short, it didn't work out very well. <laughs> and so I started to transition into games that were more streamable, so to speak, for uh, someone starting at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I couldn't really find anything that was fun. And uh, more appropriate for where we were at whenever we started streaming. Mm -hmm. And one day I was just on Steam looking for something to stream. And I wanted to play a game that was fun. And I'd just been so burnt out from how much we had grinded with the shooters. And uh, trying to kind of pop off, so to speak. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, GoPro. But we were on like an Xbox One S, I think it was. And then also streaming off of that Xbox, and then it's just not a good. It does. It's not a good recipe at all. Yeah, it's hard. So hard whenever I found process. Gwent, uh, whenever I found Gwent, oh yeah, that's another thing. Everybody <laughs> else has PCs and a million FPS, and I'm over here hovering probably around 30 FPS. <laughs> it was uh, that. That was another big thing. But anyway. Um, so anyway, Gwent, I found, I was just on Steam board and found it interesting because I've heard so many good things about it from Witcher 3 and threw it on one day and kind of, uh, I guess I was, I wasn't overwhelmed, but I was like, where do I start? Mm -hmm. You know, there's five factions. I don't have any cards. Um, You've my and right I started out with uh, Shield Wall and Northern Realms mm -hmm. with Queen Meath and poor infantries, immortal cavalries. My kryptonite was usually Nilfgaard locks and mills and Yurden and annoying cards like that that I cannot <laughs> stand. And, um,. Well, yeah, I just started streaming it and loved it way more than I thought that I would. And I'm still playing it today and enjoying it and it's so much more fun being able to interact with the community unlike yeah. in other games where there's so much more competition that you know you're mostly talking to your to yourself for the most yeah. part which can get very stale uh but yeah interesting so have you had any prior card game experience did you ever like think about like you know card games are cool i want to play them or did you like stay totally away from them no whenever i was younger i was i was really into Yu Gi Oh. actually oh, okay. the the physical the yeah. physical games with you know we had one of the little dual discs and stuff the the kaiba the og it was my favorite personally with like pegasus mm -hmm. And the Millennium Puzzle and all that good stuff. <laughs> but after it got into like the GX or G, whatever it is, Yu Gi Oh! GX or something like that, mm -hmm. I kind of was all like, eh, and stopped, <laughs> uh, stopped playing and was literally just never thought of it again. And that's the only really card experience I have other than, other than Gwent. I watched some Pokemon, but I never could get into it uh, with the card game. Yeah. I was much more into Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, I, I I had a short stint with Pokemon when I was younger, but for me it was more like collecting the cards uh, of the favorite Pokemon that I watched on the TV show as a kid. So it all made kind of a little bit more sense just to have it for the for the collector's aspect of the whole thing. So yeah, interesting uh, that you said that because yeah, normally so, like there is always something that ties us once again going back to a CCG. Like you need to have a little bit of prior experience, and I think Yu-Gi-Oh, it's either your Magic player or a Yu-Gi-Oh player in this case. So that's that's really cool. Did you ever get to play like Witcher Three to kind of uh, learn more about like where the characters from this universe have have come from? It's what made me the most most interested in streaming and playing Witcher Three is I was all like, oh my gosh, it would be so cool to see. Queen Meave in person or in the flesh, so to speak, or Dandelion and all of these interesting characters and some of the monster cards that I've seen, the art in the 
in Gwent is amazing. <laughs> um, and wanting to see people like Zoltan and just all these interesting things that you would experience before the card game, but we're experiencing it uh, before, in, you know, before the card game, obviously. Yeah. And it's uh, very much an interesting experience because I've never played a card game and then played a story game that it came from. Mm -hmm. I just have never, there's never been a situation like that. Okay. And we're level seven, seven or eight right now. And just got done with the majority of the Baron stuff and... Mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to like spoil anything or anything like that for anybody that. I think might not it's have been seven it. years. I think everything was already <laughs> spoiled for this game. <laughs> yeah, uh, and so we're way behind. But I've been enjoying it for the most part. We're playing on Death March, trying Ooh. to. So you're one of those trying players. Trying to go hundred <laughs> percent. Yes, I, I really need to play a game on hard mode. I'm like stubborn when it comes to that. Okay. Even okay. though it may be miserable at times, it's much more satisfying than uh, e you know on easy mode. Yeah. And sometimes the enemy AI can be a little bit poor on the easier modes. Like, well, I guess that makes sense. But in Death March, hard modes all the way for any story games. Yeah, I normally just go for like normal or just medium. I never go for the hardest dif difficulty. I think it's because, yeah, I like it to be a bit of a challenge, but I don't really want to be grinding the hell out of it. Like if I want a game <laughs> that is going to be like very challenging, I'll play something Souls-like, for example. Um, but yeah, it uh, was interesting. Also, uh, when you played Witcher 3, did you check out Gwent there or did you did you not? I did not. Good. I remember the <laughs> first question you get asked whenever you walk in there. Would you, you strike me as a character of interest or something yeah. along something along those a lines? A man of Would the you world care for a round and of stuff wins? like that. Yeah. And I was all like, oh, uh, not at the moment. Let's just ask more questions about where <laughs> Siri is. <laughs> so you're more uh, focused on the task instead of just uh, trying to sidetrack yourself and do things which are less important, like you know, collecting all the all the Gwent cards and stuff like that. Yeah, and I guess technically we couldn't do 100% if we didn't do that. So we'll get as close to 100% as possible, nice. but I okay. don't know if we'll dump all the time into getting the Gwent cards and stuff like that. We're taking care of all the question marks and doing the side quests so we can make sure that everything is affected ahead of time mm -hmm. because all of this, that's like one of the biggest, most important things is take your time with the game. Yeah. So that's another big focus and. Uh, something that I'm excited to experience. Nice. Yeah, it, it kind of, if you if you want to get like 100%, you will have to get to the ones that are um, connected with Gwen because you need to defeat like these Gwen bosses almost. And then when you defeat the, like the best guy, um, you will get like the full achievement for, for being the best, best Gwen player. And there, I think there is also an achievement for collecting all the cards within um, the places that you go. So easy clap and i think there are some cards that you have to get at a certain moment because if you don't then then that's too late pretty much because you're tied to some of the quests so but i don't remember 100 percent because uh i also like similar to you i was more focusing on doing the quests and the side quests within the game instead of focusing on playing gwent in it because um yeah gwent was okay ish but i feel like it lacked a little bit of the depth but for a game within a game it made a lot of sense Favorite Witcher character then? <laughs> I think it's a or card. It'll probably it can be change a card. after it can a, be card? a card. Mm, that would probably have to be Queen Meave, just because that was what we started. We played like five hundred. We got like five hundred plus matches that we actually won. So mm -hmm. we probably played like at least a thousand, maybe even twelve hundred with her, because we're always hanging around and. Uh, rank seven, six, five, rather than in the pro ranks, because we tend to lean more towards uh, goofier decks, so mm -hmm. to speak. Just because that's what I find the most fun, and we've only I've only tried three factions so far, and we have so much more that nice that we get to check out. It's insane. Um, switching between uh, milling with Nilfgaard and then Terrible. the dwarves and Scoia tell oh I know I know but I got 
I got so upset that whenever we were with our northern realms, every time it would be Yurden or it'd be Lox. <laughs> and then, you know, something would get milled like it was always something with Nilfgaard. Mm -hmm. And then I was finally like, okay, we're going to be that guy. We're going to play with Mills and we're going to, we're going to see how they like it. And at first I didn't, I didn't want to, because I was like, I'm not going to be that person. I'm going to, I'm going to make it fair, so to speak, <laughs> because I feel like it's kind of cheesy the way the mill stuff works, but oh my gosh, is it so much fun whenever you're not on the receiving <laughs> side. It's in my opinion, the only deck that, or one of the few decks that you can actually tell when your opponent is kind of messing with you, so yeah. to speak. Um, would like to bore, uh, excuse me with all of the mispronunciations, but some of these names are yeah. insane. Yeah. Traherne, where you can look at the top three cards and send one to the graveyard. All of those great, excellent cards that are just annoying, and then we always run with rot tossers and poisons. Yeah. All the bad to... stuff. All the bad stuff. <laughs> exactly. All the annoying stuff. And it works out great. So. Nice. Uh, actually, uh, spoiler for you, like Queen Meave, she's not in Witcher 3, though. <laughs> yes. No way. Yes what way. the heck? Where did she? She, uh, she inspired straight from Gwent? She's uh, from Thronebreaker. If you want to learn, oh, like okay. she, we have she appears in the books briefly. Like there is, like Geralt meets her at one point. Not to spoil anything more, because you might get to the books one day. And the most important thing is the fact that the whole like Meve arc is pretty much set within Thronebreaker, and Thronebreaker currently is on uh, the Steam Summer Sale. It's like five ninety nine or four ninety nine, so it's not very expensive. So I would recommend you to, like check it out. Um, the get like you have a hand drawn map there. Everything is kind of the like you control Meve on the map, and you go and there's an unfolding story, and the battles are done um, with Gwent games, but the, the the Gwent in there is similar to the Gwent that we have right now, but it's still a little bit older. So we kind of have grown up as as Gwent multiplayer. And that's kind of like the Gwen single player, which is uh, a little bit older, but it has nice puzzles within the game itself, and it follows her story a lot. And I think the story in Thronebreaker is just super amazing. So for the story aspect itself, I would totally pick up and check out the game because um, you will get a lot more background into her, and you also learn more about the Northern Realms. The game is set uh, during the Second of Guardian invasion, so there's like. There's a lot of like lore there, and there's a lot of stuff which corresponds with current Gwent, including like Meve and her, um, and her card art. Ah, you've my utmost gratitude. Uh, another another thing that we tend to do that's different, and which maybe one day we'll go and copy and paste the deck and try and grind to pro rank. But I feel like whenever we get it, to pro rank and we're at rank one we're going to be forced to kind of play <laughs> the meta so to speak or else we can't enjoy these some of these goofy cards so to speak but uh, my my favorite thing i always go for round one my biggest focus is to buff up my cards and then i always pass at seven yeah and so like i'll throw like an iron falcon bandit and then put two armor on hoog Mm -hmm. and or maybe do it to another teleport and throw another one on hoog and then get, always get resilience down that's what i love also is resilience resilience i'll always worst. get uh gabor or gaber gabor gabor how do you pronounce it it's just yeah gabor. okay way off <laughs> and then typically just pass the sahil has been very annoying but i found <laughs> The simplest way for me to counter it is right whenever they spawn those deafening sirens on yeah. my row, I just pass. Okay. I just let them I, I just let them go to town and then it's like, all right, we need to run one round two. And that's for some reason how we've always played is uh always throwing away round one to sort of buff up our cards in preparation for round two, whether we're going first or not, because I know 
by the rules, if, if you go blue coin, red coin, or whatever one it is, you're not supposed to pass. Yeah. However, we're a little bit different. Unless we're playing with mills, uh, then we go to six cards so we can get an additional mill, and that's just the one exception that we have for that. Okay. And it worked out really well with Northern Realms also because we would always throw Erland of Larvik down to mm -hmm. buff our deck, so that's one card. Uh, try and start with Dandelion, and then he'll be inspired, so to speak, and get the, the extra boost that you get out of him whenever he's inspired. Yeah. And then we would just pass at seven cards and everything would be pre-boosted and so we wouldn't have to worry about like getting queen meave inspired in order for her to get her timer to to tick down it would already be ready for us yeah and both of us are at 10 cards i just need to win <laughs> which sounds sounds easy right <laughs> yeah i mean that's 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 the goal that's the name of the game you need to win right that's kind of the the most important thing um, yeah, that I, I heard from from someone once uh, the best kind of uh, advice for for you know for climbing in Gwent is just you know win games easy. That's so easy to do. <laughs> right, you just go and you copy and paste one of the master decks, right, <laughs> and and then you're in. I don't know if it's that easy. We haven't tried that before. Yeah, just simply literally copying and pasting a deck that. You know, you see someone that knows what they're doing more and uh, trying it out and seeing if that's yeah. simple. I wouldn't think it is. I don't know though because I've never tried it. So, so when you when you joined the community because it was not that long ago. Like, uh, first of all, like you say, you like resilient dwarfs. You used to if you would play like in closed beta, there was this like uh, resilience used to work in a way. If you played the card on your first turn. It would stay throughout the whole games, and there were like people would boost the hell out of like dwarfs, so to make them resilient, and make them stay, you know, on the board for as long as possible. And they were just abusing the hell out of that. So that was that was a crazy, crazy time, and uh, it was like one of the most played decks. And now it kind of is like there there are still you know ones that have resilience, but it's kind of a little bit more chill right now than what it used to be back in the day. So. You would enjoy that. Um, but when you joined the Gwent community overall, is there any place that you went to in terms of like learning more about the game, like learning um, what is currently being played or how did you like get to a point where you said, okay, I want to play these decks. This is cool for me. And I will learn how to pilot them myself or I will actually get some tips from, from the community. I actually just went on YouTube and... Uh typed in simple, you know, Gwent tips for beginners and Spyro, a lot of mm -hmm. his YouTube content popped up. And so that's where I learned everything that, that, you know, the basics, like you're trying to get more provisions out of what your, or more points out of what your provisions cost, so mm -hmm. to speak. And uh, that's where I learned everything that I know. And then of course the community also has given me a lot of tips. Like a couple of weeks ago, I just learned that it's not just a matter of luck on whenever your enemies, whenever like your dwarf berserker hits a random enemy, the damage is in order from from left on the melee row, and then it's ranged row to the right. And I yeah. thought this entire time it was just random luck of the draw. And then someone in chat finally let me know, hey, it's actually this is how it works. I'm like, oh wow, that would have been good to know <laughs> a thousand matches ago. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like with and, yeah. with card games, you're always learning, right? It's like an ongoing process that you are learning how to play the cards, or maybe you're also learning like the the small kind of in between stuff uh, when it comes to how the game plays, like what triggers when, like if if things trigger also when you pass, because it's sometimes like you have the berserkers and you, when you pass, they still will ping, and that will might give you the advantage, so you don't have to play an additional card. And I think like these small kind of you know things give you this edge above your opponent sometimes um, and kind of let you go, you know, higher and higher within the ladder. Do you have like aspirations to, to, to go to pro rank and stuff like that? Or are you just more casual when it comes to like playing and then you're kind of seeing like, okay, I've just started. So to move on further on in my journey, I will be trying to, of course, get higher and higher. 
For now, the plan is to continue to play casually and just enjoy our Nilfgaard milling and our Scoia'tael. Yeah. But eventually, I'm sure we'll just do what I'm going to do is go on to the Gwent library and literally <laughs> look at all of the decks that are suggested by the pro players and see if it's that easy. But I don't know when we, I don't know when, mm -hmm. because it's so much fun for me to be able to play whatever I want and still have a chance at beating my opponent whenever I know if I'm in the lower ranks, that won't be the case. And then yeah. it's like, I got to wait 30 days before I can play my meme decks again. <laughs> Dang it. I feel like it's in a way that you get, um, you like, you grind the best decks all the way up to pro rank and when you actually get to pro rank is where you can actually start memeing again and you can start playing different factions you can start playing you know with different stuff and for the like for the for the climb itself to get there you are more focused on actually you know playing the best decks that are out there or the ones that have been tested by streamers pro players and stuff like that so um, after that, because you can't really drop out of pro rank unless, you know, at the end of the, the season. Uh, but apart from that, you're like, you're, you're there, right? So you can enjoy having fun and milling people and stuff like that. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. So you can check that out for yourself. Um, okay. So you, you are more of a player that focuses on, um, you know, having fun within the game itself. Um, do you follow any esports uh related events that we do like opens and stuff like that or did you not have a have time to like check those out for yourself i i haven't checked them out really for myself at all honestly mm -hmm. I, uh just hasn't interested me enough i guess to okay. to watch the tournaments maybe i need to give it a try but i'm, I'm aware you know that they that they have them and all of that obviously i just haven't personally had a interest to check it out for myself okay uh when it comes to stay in touch with the community like where's your where's your go-to place like apart from your own community which you created through streaming and you're creating through streaming is there any place that you go to to get like the ins and outs or is it just youtube um do you like jump into reddit Twitter, I think you don't really use a lot from based off of like what I saw. You have like one tweet, but maybe you just, you know, don't tweet, but read tweets. Um, so what's what's the deal there? Yeah, I just use Twitter to like, like mostly because whenever you don't have a whole lot of followers on Twitter, I mean, you can tweet and everything and that's fine, but you won't see, a, you know, you won't get a whole lot of likes, but yeah, I guess that's not doesn't need to be your goal anyway. Whenever you're on Twitter, uh, typically I'm just on there to stay up to date on the drama that's going around in all of gaming, <laughs> and not just in Gwent alone. And uh, we have Discord. I've had Discord for a while. Yeah, I don't have Instagram or. Um, or Facebook. I used to, but not anymore. But for the most part, it stays with Twitter, Twitch, and and Discord. Okay. For the most part. Nice. So your current plans when it comes to streaming is focusing still on Gwent, but also checking out The Witcher 3, like you said. So you're progressing through the game. Um, any other plans apart from that? Thronebreaker, probably. Um, did you ever want to play like Witcher 1 or Witcher 2, like the old legacy games? I, I considered it, but I was looking around the specifications and stuff like that, and you know some older games don't quite work as well. Whenever you're, for me personally, this is how it works: is some older games tend to, whenever I want to stream them, and I'll like Alt Tab to you know change the title or do something or whatever and then it will black screen i had this issue a while back whenever i uh, tried fallout 4 for a little bit and for whatever reason and that's not a very old game i would alt tab and it would black screen so rather than getting witcher 1 and witcher 2 and playing those i thought it was going to be safest to just go ahead and get witcher 3 since i knew it was going to work and 
the plan is to obviously play through the whole game, and then after that, just more story-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, maybe God of War and other games that need to be completed that we haven't played that I'd be excited to play on stream. Okay. But Witcher 1 and Witcher 2 are just... I don't know if they'd be able, I'd be able to stream them, so I don't really want to play them if I can't I think, stream them, honestly. You, <laughs> should, you should be able to, to do so, if I remember correctly, but uh, to be honest, I played Witcher 1 on PC, but that was like when I was 19, which was a long time ago, and uh, Witcher 2 I played on my Xbox 360, which was also a long time ago, So, and I did not stream those games ever at that time, um, although I feel like uh, when we have the next-gen version of The Witcher 3 coming out, I would want to probably replay the game once again. And I'm thinking about maybe streaming the game from like the beginning till the end. Um, but I know it's also going to be a lot because it's like 90 hours, but I think it would be really cool to, um, to go back to like, you know, streaming that uh, for sure. And also like um, probably after the expansion, a little bit of Gwent. So um, I can't wait for that. Um, as you probably all know, like the patch is coming fairly uh quick because uh, we're almost at the end of june and july is going to be starting so somewhere over there we're going to see that plus we have gwent open next weekend so there's a lot of stuff going on within gwent itself so it's going to be it's going to be a nice interesting month for sure okay awesome um where can people find you if they want to check out your your streams uh you're you're on twitch right Yes, and it's just Linkerd, but on Twitter I had to put the Linkerd because a long time ago I made a Twitter and used Linkerd, and I couldn't remember the password <laughs> and the email that was associated with it. Happens it, so. to all of us. <laughs> I know, and it's so annoying, and I couldn't. I just gave up and put the Linkerd for our Twitter, and then just Linkerd for Twitch, which is preferable. But whatever, you can't have can't have it all. Yeah makes a lot of sense awesome um anything else you would like to discuss with me here because we still have a little bit more time so there is um there is some stuff that we can we can go through you have any questions for me uh as gwen's community manager for what seven years or six years something like that um in terms of like i don't know just ask away <laughs> uh, I, I know you mentioned something about the next expansion being darker so to speak mm -hmm. so does that mean there might be more demon archetypes because i feel like whenever i go and look for uh to try and make a demon deck because i've tried to do this it just doesn't quite work out for me i mean i got like master mirror and stuff like that but will it be new demon cards possibly not only like i i think what we try to do with all of the expansions we try to add a little bit to each and each and every faction and some of them some of the cards will be a little bit more darker i don't know if, if demons are, are kind of the theme um if you ever um like get into witcher lore a little bit more you will kind of know what the curse of the black sun is um, oh, okay so that that will answer kind of a lot of questions uh, i think for some people but i also feel like with this um card drop there is a lot more stuff that is kind of like in between there are some things which maybe not aren't as super super dark but are cool uh, for players to check out. And there's also a lot of cards which actually focus on the curse itself and kind of uh, people who believe in it. Um, but that's kind of me trying to go around it, not to spoil anything. <laughs> there will be reveals starting Monday, so there will be uh, a lot of cool star cards Ooh. being dropped throughout the, throughout the whole week. And also, I think we'll finalize everything during Gwen Open, uh, which is uh, next weekend. Anything else you have for me? Are we good? Not that I can think of, honestly. Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have wrote a few questions down. Came a little bit more prepared. I can't really think of any other questions that would be all good. No, no worries about that. Uh, I see you have a lot of uh, gaming-related stuff also behind you, which is really cool. Uh, so I, I, I presume this is the your current like streaming setup is is you stream from uh, from the place that you're sitting at the moment. Yes, I usually have a little bit zoomed in, 
on on the channel. And I didn't want it to just be a white background because mm-hmm. I feel like that's kind of boring. And so we just went with a little bit of everything. You know, we got Fallout up there. We got Marvels up there. Minecraft. <laughs> PUBG with a winner winner chicken, chicken dinner, dinner shirt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so just a little bit of everything. And... We need some Gwent there. Yeah. We need some Gwent there. Oh, some yeah. You know, stuff. what are we doing? What are we doing? Yeah. That's a good. I, <laughs> I need to. We definitely need to update it a little bit, so to speak. Nice. That's all we're. That's all we play now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome to really, you know, what I like about uh, this weekend Gwent is that we have people who are either weren't known in the, within the community or who are just starting out or who are kind of like mid tier, let's say. And it's really cool to have someone that comes in, you know, with a with a fresh perspective and got into the game. Like you said, you 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 didn't expect like you getting into a card game because you're mainly before um you know playing before that uh, were like fps related games right and then you got into rpgs and then you also started streaming them so it kind of is like one of those you know it's a it's a process to really get into the streaming world and kind of uh kick it off from there I, with the fortnite stuff that i tried for the first pretty much year and a half mostly consisted of just me talking to myself for the most part and but it really did kind of prepare me i guess so to speak in a way uh, for now example you know for example it would be a little bit more intimidating to just go into gwent fresh's uh content creator mm-hmm. be a little bit overwhelming you know if a lot of people come and raid uh, raid you at once or something, and if you never experienced something like that, it's like, dang, you know, you almost <laughs> don't know how to react. Yeah. And just being able to continue to talk and stuff like that without there being chat going on, yeah. that was another thing we were able to kind of teach ourselves during that during that time. But I don't regret any of it because it made us kind of how we how we do everything today. Yeah. And that's how so. it, that's also how you how you kind of start off to get the ball rolling into it. Like you, you start and for the most part, you're pretty much doing this for yourself, right? And then you might, you know, open a tab, one of your friends might open another tab, and then you start, you know, going higher and higher. But in some titles, it's also very hard to to kind of to get noticed, right? And I think with Gwent it's good. Like it's the same thing that we do whenever we have an open. I always look for someone who is streaming the game who has like the smallest possible following. And we normally like raid that person as soon as possible. So they get kind of noticed from a lot of people who are, uh, you know, currently watching the tournaments themselves because we have bigger viewership there than that person probably has on his or her stream. So it's always good to, you know, give them this small boost. And I think it's also, you know, it works great for, building your own community. And I feel like it always starts with, um, you know, you doing it mainly by yourself and then more people join in, then you start a discord for it. And the whole thing kind of keeps, you know, snowballing, which is awesome to see. Like then, you know, these uh, content creators and streamers just start becoming uh, partnered and the whole thing kind of, you know, gets gets more momentum going, which, which is uh, something that I love to see like personally. Because I remember that, you know, each and one of us kind of, we started from, from zero. Maybe for me, it was a little bit easier because I'm tied to CDPR and I was known for, for Gwent and the official streams. So it was much easier for me to like build my own um, uh, Twitch pretty much account and, you know, have people join me here. Um, well, you know, in the beginning, it's also, it's a process. It just takes a lot of steps. So I think you just need to be patient with it, you know, sticking to what you do and then we'll, you will kind of see where that takes you right cool it's all it's all about patience that's the biggest thing yeah it's the biggest thing exactly all right man this was awesome it was great knowing you yeah. uh that's we'll be closing that off uh we know where to find you so you're on twitch um so check out you'll be streaming when 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 do you normally stream like what's your schedule that's one thing i forgot to ask Usually it's uh, after I get off of work around 11 my time. I'm usually home by 11 anyway. 
and, and you're then I'll currently. So, I'm sorry. You're you're based in so you, eleven your time so people can know more or less. Oh yeah, that would be good to know. Uh, central time, central mm -hmm. yeah, central time. Okay. Like right now, for me, example, it's it's nine fifty a.m. for me right now. That's early. And I kind of <laughs> stream backwards from like eleven to about five mm -hmm. or four, and so on my off days, I tend to try and stream during the daytime so I can change it up a bit and not always stick to the nighttime thing. But I like to try and lean towards this, the same routine, so to speak, mm -hmm. and the same schedule uh, because it works out not only for the people that come in, and it also works out for my my work schedule for my other job. And yeah. so, but whenever I have an opportunity to play during the daytime, it's always great to stream during the daytime. And uh, I'll probably be on tonight or maybe later today. I don't know. I went to bed at like 530 because I couldn't go. I couldn't get any sleep last night. Aww. And I yeah, I was just all like, forget about it. Forget about yeah. it. And I was able to get maybe maybe an hour or two, but not not much. So I might I might take a nap or something like that. And then maybe we'll hop on a little earlier than usual. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Then get some rest. Uh, we'll be closing this one out. We'll be back, of course, uh, next week, which I think we'll be also doing the draw show for open number two next week on Friday. So that's going to be interesting. And yeah, we shall close it off with that. Um, I have to think who we're going to be rating, but I think that won't be also a problem. So yeah, that's it. Thank you, Lankard. It was awesome talking to you. Thank you, everybody, for watching. And like I said, we'll be back next week. Bye. Thanks for having me. Always.